Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Guess what? I actually got three casts out this week. I am so excited about that. I finally got everything back on track where I'm able to do these. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into a game of Open Palms. This is another one versus one, but this is a longer game, so I'm not going to leave you in the next 15 minutes. This is between the Red Viper, who we saw before, taking the Cybern in red, and Calvarox, another guy from my clan. He is Aeon taking the white color. They are 1700 and 1800, so very, very close to the same rank. And uh, both pretty good one versus one players, so hopefully we can watch this and learn something valuable. The map is Open Palms, and as I've discussed before, I have an extreme dislike for this map just because it takes so much concentration to do everything that you need to do. It's got a wide open space in the center, two plateaus to fight over with a total of three mechs on each one, lots of expansion to do, and then a vicious run-by circle behind your base. This is one of the few maps where you actually start out towards the middle of everything. So. Let's take a look at our early builds here. We've got Red Viper going second air, which is always the smart choice on a map this size. If you are not going first bomber, you're probably going to be preventing first bomber. And Calvarox is, well, I say first bomber. Early bomber, out of the second factory. Calvarox is also going second air, building a whopping five power generators, which is pretty slim pickings as far as early power is going, but he is rushing the Hydro, so I think he will be fine. And then Red Viper went for more power generators. He has a total of six and is planning the Hydro soon. Alrighty then. We've got Engineer pushing off to the side, going to build a land factory way over there, doing some manual reclaim on the trees to make up for power and mass. And then, same thing on the other side. <clears throat> Looks like Calvarox is also doing the same thing. And this manual reclaim right here, this is honestly make and break a game at this level of play. When you have two people of roughly even skill, the determining factor is going to be how much... These guys can eke out of the mass that they're given, and any little bit of added efficiency is going to be massive. Now, this is kind of a diametrically opposed faction choice. We have Cybrant with the extremely speedy, spammy T1, and we have Aeon with the slowest Tech 1 tank, the Aurora, but it has the longest range. So, the kiting effect is going to be felt a slightly bit smaller amount for Cybern as it is for other factions because the Mantis is going to be able to overtake its targets a lot earlier than the other tanks will. And here we do have an early bomber from Red Viper, but first interceptor, well no, first scout. Second interceptor out from Calvarox is going to drop that reasonably quickly. We do have one engineer down. Interceptor is immediately going to close and kill that thing off before oh it did get the bomb off just barely two engineer kills so that bomber was technically worth its mass maybe not worth the time invested to micro it anyway as i was saying um we have speedy versus a bit of babysitting on the micro side of things and hopefully the aeon will have a stronger late game it kind of depends on how things go, though, because the Cybern player does have the bricks, which Harveys have a very, very hard time dealing with. But we'll just have to see how this game plays out and what kind of options are on the table for these players. We've got three Interceptors online for the Red Viper and zero Zilch Nada for Calvarox, but he is going to brave the airs with his T1 bomber here might get a triple kill on this group of engineers if he's very lucky. Bomber is going to survive for one pass. Engineer separating. Very wise choice. One bomb. And... Was that a second bomb? That was a very fast double bomb if it was. Yeah, I think that was a second bomb. Nicely done on the micro for Calvarox. Very good. Very nice. So two bomber kills with that one. Exactly even. All right, Open Palms is all about aggression. You can see over here on the left-hand side, we've got Auroras with the necessary scouts. Always, 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 always send scouts with your Auroras because as you can see, the 
Vision radius is smaller than the attack radius, so if you don't have radar coverage, you are losing the attack potential of your auroras. That is absolutely critical. Pushing off to the left here, trying to get some of this expansion taken care of, and then moving to the right with his ACU. Not a factory planned over there. Slight bit of an odd choice, but to each his own. And then plans in the rear. Looks like a bit, about the same amount of land span. A little bit more land factories for the northern side. Actually a few more because he had a couple on his hydro as well. He has four adjacent to his mass extractors here and then two adjacent to his hydro for a total of 10. And then on the southern side we have seven. So we're gonna see a bit more land from the Red Viper. He is probably going to go all out production on combat units with very little attention paid to his eco. That is one thing that Cybering does excel at. And he is also going to go for a bit of extra air. He's throwing down a second air factory. He is pushing less power at 340 and less mass at 31. He's got 1200 reclaim in the bag at the moment. And Calvarox has a bit less reclaim, but he does have more mass and more power. Nice job on the run buys though for the Red Viper. We have a Mantis over here on the right. I'm gonna peg that mass extractor, possibly, yes, pick up that engineer. Excellent prioritization. Realized it late. And another Mantis there. Those have not been built yet. I thought that may have been a kill. We do have a drop up here. We can see this transport's actually ferrying engineers around so that the expansion does not take quite so long. Efficiency is key as, well, in a lot of things, but especially in Supreme Commander, because that little tiny leg up is often what hands the game to one player or another. That is going to be one plateau for Calvarox. Three mass extractors is not a huge deal, but it can come in pretty handy. And it looks like no attempt for the right at all from Calvarox. Now I do believe that you can build a land factory up here and you can actually walk engineers up once you bridge that gap. You do not necessarily have to have a transport, but the transport is a little easier to do. Doesn't mean that you have to build that extra factory. Red Viper venturing forth a little bit. He is going to have to be very careful though. Because the Auroras actually outrange the unupgraded ACU. So the Auroras can kite an ACU to death unless that ACU has the gun upgrade. And then the Aurora with its measly little 140 health is absolutely helpless against a gun upgraded comp. The commander can just kill them in droves. So that is a very wise choice for playing versus Aeon. Gun on your commander is always a nice thing. Calvarox does have his ACU over here in the mix, so I think he's going to be okay. The problem is going to be this run by. He does have some tanks around. You can see him kiting, trying to stay out of range. Some, there's a bit of a little blunder here and there. But overall, he has killed far more Mantis than the Mantis have killed his Auroras. Just picking them off one by one from excellent range. You can see this group down here. Red Viper started with far more Mantis, but I think that actually came out really well for Calvarox. Calvarox does have T2, and you actually have a variety of choices for T2. This is one of the situations where you could feasibly build blazes, and hello, Mr. Jester. I was hoping we would see you this game. Buzzing around happily down here, taking care of this mass extractor, only he is going to get swatted out of the air by a pack of wild interceptors. With Aeon, if you go for the Blaze, the Blaze does not necessarily have as much damage potential as the Obsidian does, but it is very fast. It is faster even than the Mantis, and it will allow you to prevent some of those pesky runbys that Cybering is so good at. On the other hand, you can build the Opsidian. The Opsidian is... It can one-hit kill any Tech 1 unit, and it does do a slight little bit of overkill. Not too much, but a little bit. But... It's kind of like the Percival. Once you get enough of them in one spot, it is extremely hard for lower tier units to actually kill a pack of obsidians. 
Obsidians are well worth their mass, and they are tough bastards. But uh, not seeing any blazes, it looks like Calvarox has gone for the Obsidian option. I've seen a few of them here and there. There's one right here in this group. And another up at the north. Personal shield is quite handy on this unit. It's almost like having a bit of veterancy right off the bat. The regen may not make a huge difference, but hey, that one extra tank shot you survived may be the difference between life and death. Let's check out what ACU upgrades we have here. Calvarox is unupgraded. Looking at you, Red Viper. And there you are. Also looks unupgraded. Alright, so this is strictly land battle. Now one thing I do see that is very, very different is the eco. Calvarox has a whopping 90 income. Red Viper, 70 or below, depending on his reclaim. And uh, that is due in part to both of the plateaus own, being owned by Calvarox. And then also, Calvarox has been upgrading to T2 mass extractors. Um, actually, it looks like Red Viper has two. He has one, two, three, three T2s. So it is about the same. I thought for a second there, four T2s, that uh, Calvarox may have had a couple more T2 mexes, but it looks like they're about the same for now. We will have to check in on that later to see if Calvarox keeps ramping up his eco. And this is why having the plateaus is awesome. You can build uh, mobile missile launchers and mobile artillery that can fire down from the ledge. And that allows you to deny all of these mass points. There's six mass extractors there that you can completely obliterate. And that will deny a whole lot of eco. I'm going to kill off a factory and some build power there as well. And the same thing is going on down on the southern end. We've already got two mass extractors down here, two here, and we are rapidly losing touch with the land factory and these mass extractors. That is going to widen the eco, eco gap even more between Calvarox and the Red Viper. Now the problem is, Red Viper has an absolutely mind-boggling amount of Mantis. This is very, very bad. There is a T3 factory online. This means that Calvarox has dumped his economy into that T3 upgrade and was not able to sustain enough combat units on the field to actually prevent this from happening. But there is one hope. Let's see if he does it. Red Viper, yes is going to manually target the T3 HQ, allowing an inferior number of units to just wreak havoc on this army. Killing off most of the tanks, now we just have to deal with the Medusas. A little bit of micro can uh, alleviate some of that stun effect and the damage coming in. So yes, the T3 HQ is down, and the T2 HQs can subsequently not produce T2 units, that is actually a reasonable blow, but Red Viper lost a lot of his force. Now that's also going to leave a ton of reclaim right down here where Calvarox can get his mitts on it. Seeing some awesome harassment at the moment, backing out a little bit to look at the map, we see all of this being gone for Calvarox. Nice run buys with uh, the Mantis there and then T1 Bombers coming in to finish it off. We've got the Southern Expansion under fire from Jesters and T1 Bombers. And then these expansions being absolutely hammered by a mix of Medusas and Mantis. Now, we're still not seeing any Tech 2 from Red Viper looks like, uh, nope, that, I thought that might have been an upgrade, but it is not. So he is strictly relying on the T1 spam. T1 spam is great. The problem is, once the opposing player gets a critical mass of T2 built up, it doesn't really matter how much T1 you make. The T1 will fail with a little bit of good micro from the other player. Seeing some anti-air torts going down here, that's going to be brilliant. I'm going to hopefully knock down all of these units and save this expansion probably going to lose that T2 support factory, but oh well, it can't be helped. No, it's going to survive. Very nice indeed. Calvarox 
I believe he is wielding the gun upgrade. And range, looking at the distance on that shot. Yes, the massive range of the Aeon Commander coupled with the extra damage, 200 damage per second with double the firing rate. So that is going to allow him to mow down all of these units. And hopefully he can start reclaiming. Seeing a nice push with Obsidians. That is a lot of Obsidians. But there is an ACU there. But that ACU does have the range upgrade on his... Or this person has the range upgrade on his commander. So that is all well and good. Obsidian is going to retreat. Hopefully not going to all get overcharged to death. And the push continues up the center. But as you will notice here, the push has kind of lost its inertia. There's quite a few units there, but there are even more units from Calvarox plus his commander. Just, it, it is amazing what that range does for you with the Aeon commander. Jesters and T1 bombers coming in, hoping to make sure that that T2 HQ goes down. It goes down for a second time. And once again, gonna have to rebuild an HQ. It's getting kind of tired, so it might be good to think about a T2 HQ a little further back so that you're not having to deal with that constant beatdown coming from the front. Now, Red Viper has managed to get his sneaky little Mantis all up into those expansions. We see he does have a T2 factory online now. These expansions are down due to some Mantis. We've got three Mantis over here, and then we've got a Medusa on this side, killing off those mass extractors. Now, the mass income is still not terrible. Calvarox is behind, but he is only about seven behind, and that is mainly due to owning these expansions. Now, one thing I do think we'll see a difference in is reclaim. We've got seven, 7,800 for the Red Viper, as opposed to 18,000. Well over twice as much reclaim for Calvarox, and that reclaim is what is sustaining his economy. That is going to give him unlimited power. Well, not power, mass. And that is a very good thing. It's going to allow him to churn out as many T2 units as he wants. I, I would like to see T3, but he's tried to get to T3 before and it ended badly for him. Maybe it will actually happen this time. Building Auroras while he is not able to build T2. Uh, T2. I love the power spam. So much power in the back here. And we've actually got power spam going down for Calvarox in the expansions. Just on the offside chance that there's another run by that penetrates his base. And we do see an empty mass extractor here. Definitely need to pick that up, my friend. We've got two idle engineers there. Please, oh please, claim that mass extractor slot because that's painful to see it empty. We've got three mantis in the back. They're going to open fire on this land factory that's not building anything and may actually succeed in taking out that entire expansion, which would be very, very sad. Calvarox is up on a couple of veterans he now, and he is still shooting away at all of this Tech 1 that is still hanging around in the middle. We've got more Jesters moving in. I don't know why Red Viper is building so many Jesters. By this point, he should have gone T2 Air and been building Renegades because the Renegades are far better than the Jesters are once you've invested the mass for, I don't know, I think one time I added it up and it's like six or seven Jesters is the breaking point. It's like by the time you build the seventh Jester, you should have upgraded to T2 and built Renegades. And it would have been better in the long term because the Renegades have that awesome AoE a longer flight time and more health, both health per unit and health per mass, which makes them much more survivable because I think we're about to see right here, we have a flat cannon moving down here and it is going to wipe out these gestures very, very quickly. Second flat cannon and the third, I think we're about to see air superiority disintegrate for the Red Viper. These three Mantis just chillaxing in the back. There's nobody back here to bother him. They're just going to keep pounding away on these mass extractors. And why not? There's no one stopping them. They should just do whatever they want. Got that land factor going down again at some point. Yes, there's a T2HQ finally building it in the back. Hallelujah. All right. Getting the T3 upgrade as well. So it looks like we're going to go for a Harbinger push again. 
We've got T1 bombers and jesters still trying to pester this base, although they're not being very successful considering the large amount of flak that is located there. Still going for T1 gens. It looks like we had T2 gens that were lost in the last run by. That is very sad. I did not see that the first time around, and I should have picked up on that. But yeah, two T2 gens lost. That is a devastating blow to anyone's eco. We do have two T2 gens online for the Red Viper. It's amazing how Calvarox is pushing half the mass and half the power but is still sustaining a much higher score than the Red Viper, mainly because of the amount of units killed and the fact that we have 9k. My goodness, I have the hiccups. I'm sorry, people. Maybe they'll quit. 9k reclaim for the Red Viper, and Calvarox has 25k, almost three times as much. One thing that the Red Viper is doing right, though, he is building T1 bombers because Auroras are horrendously pitiful when harassed with bombers because they all die in one pass every time all the time due to their low health and they also have the slow movement and response time which makes them not very good at dodging t1 bombers so yeah when you're versus auroras use the bombers abuse the bombers and you will not be sorry calvarox is still hanging on though I have to see what he comes up with to dig himself out of this situation Apparently, everyone is a fan of T1 power. I am thinking that this guy has no T2 power. Instead, he has built a whopping total of 58 T1 power generators plus his hydro. That is ridiculous. All right, now, Calvarox needs to start expanding again, and he is to a certain extent. We see engineers pulling in for this mass extractor and also running around for these mass extractors. And then the obsidians and flak and all manner of whatnot are progressing towards the expansion as well in an effort to protect those ACUs. Not ACUs, those engineers, the little bitty teeny tiny underling engineers. Definitely not combat worthy. Unless, I saw a clip the other day, uh, if you have not looked at Colonel Shepard's videos, the FAF Awesome Fail videos, you definitely need to go look those up. Just YouTube search the Forged Alliance Colonel and you will find his videos and he has some fantastic conglomerations of different shots of people doing epic things and one of them was an engineer denying a tank. I'm going to describe it here real quick for you because it was hilarious. We have an engineer, we have a tank, and the tank was shooting at the engineer. The engineer built a wall in between the tank and itself, so the tank began shooting the wall instead of the engineer, and then the engineer reclaimed the tank. And it won. One engineer versus one tank, and it won. Walked away alive. Very impressive. You should totally use that trick. I would love to see it more. We do have some blazes on the field now. Just a couple, but they are there. And those are going to be a bit of a speed advantage for the Aeon and help out on some of these run buys. I would definitely hope anyway, because the run buys are slowly killing Calvarox. And these three Mantis have succeeded in their task of desolation, and they are just going to vacation in the back in the sunny fields of Open Palms, you know, away from the resort crowd up here because nobody wants to deal with all of the rowdy neighbors. We do have bricks on the field from the Red Viper. The T3 factory is online and pushing bricks as fast as it will go with the help of about a dozen or so engineers. Actually, that's probably more like 20. I am underestimating, better to underestimate than overestimate, in my opinion. Get you in less trouble most of the time unless you're calculating labor hours. Um, we have a stealth upgrade and a gun upgrade. Always the nice thing to do. The Aeon player, where is his commander? Ah, Pesky Jester. He does have both gun upgrades still, but nothing else. Now these three Jesters are gonna move back around and attack this expansion after the flak has moved on. And there's a Harbinger. That means the T3 factory is online for Calvarox as well, and it is. Problem is, 
Harbingers do not fare very well against Bricks, but there is another option on the table. Calbrox does have both gun upgrades for his commander. I think the shield upgrade would be a very good investment at this point, and that would allow him to safely overcharge a lot of Bricks and save his T2 army the trouble of dealing with them. So definitely something he should think about if he's not already. He's a better one versus one player than I am, so he's probably thought of it, and my suggestion is empty. Well, hopefully you can take the suggestion. Maybe it'll help you win a game that you wouldn't have otherwise won. That is my goal here, after all. The even songs are firing away at these T1 engineers. Sadly, it is a non-tracking projectile, so yeah, not a whole lot of good hits, although there are a few here and there. We've got a scout running up. That's going to provide some much needed intel for Calvarox. Always get your scout on. It is probably the most important thing you can do in any game. And I love the eco balance. A little not so much eco balance. Red Viper is not balanced at all. And Calvarox has also severely dipped into the negative. So I am disappointed. Calvarox pulling 60 mass. Red Viper pulling. Uh, um, yeah, 69. Giggity. Alrighty now. Go ahead and check the reframe while we're observing these bricks pummel a group of T2. We've got 13k for the Red Viper and a whopping 39 for Calvarox. Still running three times the reclaim as his opponent. And looking at the map control, that is what's keeping him alive. Actually, Red is not doing too badly. We've got a Harbinger up here that is going to go down under the weight of fire of all of these units, plus a brick. Almost a second brick. Harbingers are roughly equivalent to walking T1 point defense, and I love this fact. They are so extremely good at plinking away at land spam. When you have a one versus one game like this, and you have... Ah, there's no... When you have people, uh spamming away for all they're worth, Harbingers are better than their weight in gold for dealing with land spam like this. They're very fast, they can respond quickly, they have enough range to just barely outreach a T1 unit, and they're brutally efficient at taking everything out, so very nice units. But they don't stand up to bricks, so that is a problem. More T1 Bomber Harassment, which actually does work in groups of land like this. Bomber comes through, takes out a chunk of tanks, and everyone leaves happy except for the guy who lost the tanks. Up in the northern side, we have a brilliant attack force. We have four flak protecting a single Aurora. This is what you do when you don't have air control. Massive amounts of interceptors for the Red Viper, not so much for Calvarox, but Calvarox does have the flak, so that is a good repellent for any sniping that might happen, and actually there are Corsairs building at the moment. There are already four of them, so I smell a snipe in the near future, but that is going to be a scouted snipe. Scouts coming in, Corsairs are actually going to shoot at and take down the scouts that are flying. Had a minor technical blip there, guys, but I have picked back up in the same spot. So, jumping back into the action here. We've got three Harbingers on the left. That is a pretty much impossible to stop raiding party at this point in the game. And on the right-hand side, we do have ground being retaken by Calvarox. He is expanding outwards, reclaiming his mass extractors, and hopefully getting a better footing in the world. However, there is still a Lonely Mantis down on the right pestering this engineer to death and is going to kill this beautiful little mass extractor that has already started its upgrade. So that is a waste of mass in a multitude of ways and still got these camping in the back. Alrighty then. I have said alrighty then far too many times this match. Perhaps that will be my sponsored phrase of the day. Okay, this is going to get a little bit hairy. We have a group of six bricks on the left and Calvarox is under an upgrade that would be the shield upgrade I do believe that is gonna make that a very tough commander and I'm wondering if Calvarox or if the Red Viper has scouted that because the T2 bomber snipe is probably not going to work 
with Calvarox having the shield. That is going to throw a huge wrench into the works for the Red Viper. He's got three additional breaks accompanied by a huge squad of Medusas on the right hand side. That is going to be more than enough to deal with the Harbingers that are here as long as he micros them correctly and does not let the Harbingers get away with kiting the main group and wiping them out. Looks like he is going to be able to push those back. May actually be enough Harbingers now to kill this side group. Looking on the left, yes, Calvarox does have the shield upgrade. He is slightly outnumbered, I think. Not terribly, but now it's even. If he can overcharge these bricks to death, that will be the end of it, and Calvarox will have land control, and here comes the attempted T2 snipe. This is not going to end well. We're about to see <laughs> how well Red Viper handles a denial. We've got a little bit of dodging. Two-thirds health left on that. We have some interceptors. We have Flak right here coming down towards the commander. Commander running to the Flak. And air just disintegrating. Bombers falling left and right. We've got interceptors being shot down. There's only four Flak. Ah, more coming in from every single factory. Now we're up to about 10 Flak. And you saw all the air that was there before. This is rapidly falling apart. There goes air superiority. That is it. I think that is game because Red Viper does not have anything left. Calvarox is back up to 97 mass per tick. And Red Viper, what you gonna do, bud? You're gonna have to do something brilliant to get yourself out of this mess. That commander shield was the best thing. Ah, he's going to take the option out. He's going to control K, handing the game over to Calvarox. And I must say, Calvarox, that was well-deserved. That is a good, solid, strategic win. Excellent micro. Very well done on defending yourself in the front of the base. Maybe some bad timing on that T3 factory upgrade. If you could have gotten two Harbingers out of it, it would have been worth it. But losing that HQ multiple times was bad. The Red Viper did real well. The harassment was awesome. That is what I always fail at is the harassment with the bombers and the jesters and all of that other stuff going on. It's just hard to keep track of. So well done for both guys. Hopefully everybody learned something from this match. Thank you so much for watching. Also, to you guys who are my loyal viewers, I have an opportunity for you. If you want to be featured in the, wait for it, Insanity 2.0, uh, the Insanity Cup is returning. We're going to have the second round of it in a few weeks here, but I'm still working on the promotional video. If you want to be a part of the promotional video, I'm making my own this time, and I'm taking clips up to five seconds long. I'm going to put a forum link in the description. If you have a cool moment, an epic shot of something walking, experimental moving, shots fired, a uh, brilliant ACU kill, you dying in a stupid way, anything you can fit into five seconds that looks cool, Send me your screen name for the game. Send me the clip either in Dropbox or upload it as an unlisted YouTube video and forward me the link and I will get you into the promo video. I'm looking forward to getting some material from you guys and showcasing the FAF community. Anybody who plays this game, you guys are awesome and uh, I know that we'll have a good time with the tournament. Now I'm not saying anything about what the tournament is actually going to be. I'm just going to give you a tiny little hint. This is a completely off the wall game concept that I don't think has been done in tournament form. It's going to be really odd and you're going to want friends along to do it with you. So. Maybe I already said too much, but Insanity Cup is on the way. Go check out that forum link and send me your cool stuff. All right, that is it for me. I am out of here. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you in the next cast.